Welcome to Heroes 2, The Making of a Game. We are going to be exploring in this episode what the process is for recording the beautiful music from Heroes. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, today we have Laura Morena and Williams Costa Jr. We are going to be talking about once the musical score is written, what does it take to put it into production? So thank you guys for joining me. Um, I know you each have your own area of expertise in this, and I'm very excited to have both of you with us today. It's my pleasure. Good to be thank here. You. Good to be here. <laughs> So let's start at the very beginning. So we have this beautiful music score. I absolutely have fallen in love with it myself. Um, tell me, once you got this musical score, um, Williams, what did it take to find the next stage? Because you have to record this. So I believe you found a great orchestra to do this. Can you give us a little bit of background? Yeah, music production is a very complex process. It starts with the creation of the melody, then comes the harmony, then comes the arrangement. The creator needs to invent everything, all the notes, all the effects, all the rhythms, all the, the sounds that comes from the instruments. And once we have that, then it starts the process of recording. We go and, and create layers, layers of uh, uh, instruments. So first it starts with what we call basic tracks, and then after the basic tracks, basic tracks are guitar, uh, uh, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, bass, drums, keyboards. Those are the basic tracks. Then after that, normally we record the vocals, the background vocals, voices that will do this. And then after that, we have the orchestra. And finally, on the top of all of that comes the voice. And Laura probably can explain a little bit better how she recorded the voice, how she did the vocals on that. Fantastic. All right. So there's kind of like four stages to this. Um, so once you got it, who did the original, um, like the acoustic guitar and the electric guitar, who did that process of this? Well, the, the, the creation of the composition and the arrangements is from Clayton, Clayton Nunes. He's a very creative, very bright, very talented guy. And the recording of the basic track was done in Nashville. So that's one of the beauties in music production that we, we don't need to do all together. We hear all together, but we can pick and choose places and musicians from around the world that we can do this recording. And Clayton did this in Nashville. We used some musicians, very skilled musicians down there. But the orchestra was done in Prague with musicians from the Prague Philharmonic. Let's dig into that. And just for those of you who are watching this one, if you have not caught the one we've already done before with Clayton, make sure you stay to the end. There's a little thing on the end screen that'll point you to that video. So you'll learn all about Clayton and his work with the arranging and the composition. But let's dig into this. You went to Prague, Williams, I believe, and you actually conducted the Prague Symphony Orchestra. Am I correct? Yeah, well, musicians from Prague, because Prague has four or five good symphonic orchestras. So musicians that were available on that. Okay, so was this just in, in the process of one day? How long did it take you to actually be able to get that recording? Well, recording has lots of pre-production work. So before we have the moment that we go on stage and conduct the orchestra, we need to connect with a person that it's it's a kind of contractor and they connect each musician that will participate of course that we give a list of of uh, uh, instruments that we need for the recording he connect with these people put them together confirm the schedule the day and the hour and then finally we arrive there with the music score, it's something very big like that. And in each line, you have one instrument, flute, clarinet, bassoon, trumpets, trombones, uh, French horns, uh, violins, violas, cellos, percussion. So all the instruments. 
Once we have that arrangement that was produced by Clayton, then we make individual copies of the instruments. And those are the material that come to each musician that we will play. And when we conduct and they are reading uh, firsthand, then everything comes together. It's, it's a very interesting process. And that's the way that we record the orchestra. So I, I've sung with an orchestra and I will tell you, looking at the, um, the, the main book, it's like so amazing just like to see how, how you can like, um, just like work with all of those, um, instrumentations. So let's talk about the voice part of this, Laura. I'm so glad that you were able to be with us here because you are the voice of this song. So yeah. tell me what that experience was like. Thank you for having me too. Um, it's been a pleasure to sing and to be able to participate in this project. I had heard the song a few years ago and I love it. You know, I've played the song at my church um, for, you know, for the youth to sing. And it was um, such a joy to be able to sing and to record this version for, you know, the game and everything. Um, so I recorded two versions of this song. I recorded one in English and one in Portuguese because I'm originally from Brazil and the only little detail that I think is worth pointing out is that I was almost nine months pregnant when I recorded it. So I have albums and all, but it was, I think it was the most challenging recording of my life because the air towards the end of pregnancy, you know, your airflow is, is something that's already challenging to speak. Um, so to sing is, it's particularly um, challenging. Um, however, I did have people there to assist me. Um, so Clayton was there and that was really good because he, you know, I, I know he had a vision for the song, you know, he wrote the song and, and so he would give me pointers here and there of things he had imagined. Um, while it's also giving me the freedom to be able to sing and create and, you know, leave my own mark. And he also corrected me many times on the lyrics. Williams was there too, um, to make sure my initiation was, you know, clear and understandable. So I always think that having people to assist you when you record is so important because if you only do it with a technical person, like the sound engineer, um, you won't have much feedback and that's terrible. <laughs> so it was a fairly fast process. I think we were done in four hours. Um, you know, with the two versions, which was pretty good. But I did know the song very well. I had heard it in the past many times. So it was nice. And I was um, greatly relieved that I was able to sing it, even though um, I was very pregnant. Yeah. Um, having been pregnant and sang, I totally empathize with you yeah. on so many <laughs> levels. Um, you definitely are having to learn how to breathe again. Yes, correct. Um, but your voice is beautiful. It's Thank um, you. I actually, I listened to the song when I went for a walk for an hour. Um, oh, nice. <laughs> so I was like, I'm very familiar with your beautiful vocal tone. Mm -hmm. so. so after you get the, you have the orchestration and then we have Laura's um, beautiful voice. How do we put these together? Yeah, well, the, the, the recording is making in a process that we call channels. So channels are like layers. And through modern technology, we have software that can have um, more than 100 channels. And we can put in each uh, a channel, in each layer, something. An effect, a percussion, of the sound of the vogue, a different version of the orchestra, different version of the guitar. And after we have all of that together, then we choose the best takes and that's the performance. Now, the question is, how can we synchronize everything? There is count. We can make counts. There is click, tick, tack, tick, tack, tick, that in all the recordings, people can hear the click, can hear the count. And also there is a, um, a technology um called a time code and with the time code we synchronize all the channels and even we can synchronize this audio with video 
So this is why we make soundtracks for films, for documentaries. It's using this time code thing. What, what, let me just interrupt you there. What many people don't know is that there is a lot of work put into a production after everything is recorded, you know, because you still, you're still dealing with creation, with how much something's going to sound. Oh, I want more guitar here. I want more voice here. I want more. So there's, and you really have to know what you're doing, frequencies and all that. So the technicians, they know what they're doing. It's a lot of work. Yeah, the yeah. editing process seems like it's like a key to this because you know you have to make sure everything is like within perfect balance of each other to give the like the most like magnificent sound to the project. Mm -hmm. um, Laura, I have a question for you. So you were able to sing, be a part of this. What would you say to other people who have musical talents? They want to use them um, in a good way like this. What encouragement could you give to them? You know, sometimes people um keep waiting for a big break you know um they want to do something big um and they don't do the small you know part of the job which is you know just sing you know if you have a local church if you have um i don't know if you have an audience you know you have internet these days you can record yourself singing and just post it on youtube on instagram wherever um so just do it um pray that the lord will bless you will use this for a greater good and pray that this will reach people in need people who need to listen to the message and he'll do the work you know you're just a vessel and and he'll open the doors too so don't wait for something big or a big break just start doing what you can with what you can and the lord will conduct you and Williams, one last question for you. I know you love music. It's like in your core being. Um, I think God has definitely given you that talent. Um, there's a lot of people nowadays. There's there's so many things that you can use, like even like Garage Band. If you if you're given a Mac, you have Garage Band. Can you give some encouragement to people who are out there who are interested in the not necessarily the singing, but like the production part of it? What kind of encouragement would you give to them? Mm -hmm. uh, I. I always become inspired and amazed with young talent. Of course, that talent and, and ability and creativity that comes from anyone is welcome. But especially a young person that it's a starting life and then has an idea or has a dream, or that's special to me because those lives have been inspired to do something meaningful. And uh, I try to say to them, don't give up your dreams. Many times it's a real sacrifice to transform dreams in reality, mm -hmm. but it's so rewarding after all the work, after all the time to see an idea transformed in something useful something that inspire people. And above everything, I always encourage the people that create to be vassals into the hands of God. So ask the, the blessing of the Holy Spirit, the inspiration from God to do whatever you do, to play, to write, to arrange, to produce, to record, to do whatever you do. Because in doing that, the angels will be with you. The Holy Spirit will lead all the process. And once it's recorded, that recording will be a true blessing to people. Many times we think to do for our own pleasure or for our own glory. But when we work and do things for the glory of God, it's it makes a difference. It Amen. makes a huge difference. Amen. Thank you so much again for joining us. Thank you all for watching this. Um, we encourage you right now to wherever you're watching this, follow this channel and um, come back, watch more content and definitely come back and watch more videos from this series of the making of the heroes, as well as all the other videos from the heroes ultimate Bible trivia game.